Hello and welcome to the Soapbox YouTube channel. My name is Carol or Case. I am the current content provider for the music production provisions that occur in Soapbox, both within the youth center and online via our Zoom classes. I'll put a link in the description to the Zoom links and, and where you can kind of come and join us for some music production stuff. On a Thursday between 4 and 8 p.m. GMT or BST, depending on which season we're in. So just a quick background about myself. I've been serving in the music scene or the music kind of production scene for around three, three and a half years. I'm coming up to about three and a half years now. I do a lot of background stuff for artists, recording, uh, mixing vocals, getting the vocals ready, uh, mastering, so like final, final touches before they fly out to distributors for release and all that sort of good stuff. In today's video, we'll be looking at Logic Pro X, We'll be looking at the user interface, navigating said interface, what the interface does, where you can edit the interface to make it feel as comfortable for you to be able to achieve a blistering workflow and just be able to pump out tracks one after one after one after one. Um, this is highly important, especially if I like like myself, I work with singers and, and, and you know rappers and stuff. I need to be able to achieve a quick workflow and be able to achieve the sound as quickly as possible this can be done for multiple things, primarily kind of editing the layout of the user interface to make it feel as simple and as, as clean to me as possible. This helps, especially when you have like artists and stuff and they're just looking for stuff around the screen. It's there, it's laid out. They're not looking for something, you're ready to go. Cool. So um, we're gonna focus on the user interface up the top currently, which is the transport bar, the modes, the editing, and all the good stuff. So, this is how Logic arrives. So when you first open up Logic, this is what it looks like. It will have either an audio channel or a software instrument ready to go. The first things you want to look at occur up in this top hand of the screen. So within the top left, we have a library, which is like a file system, which has all the built-in sounds for Logic. We then have the inspector window, which is this just here. Um, this kind of shows us what's currently on the channel, whether it's a piano, a guitar, what effects are running on that channel. Is there any kind of, uh, is there anything special going on where the channels are being sent, so on and so forth. We then have the toolbar, which is completely editable. Um, where you have like a set of features that would normally be under commands. You can kind of you can kind of see them here. Next, we have the smart controls, they refer to them, which are like pre-mapped dedicated tools and things that can be changed on the fly. We then have the editor window, which looks a little bit something like this, and which we'll be looking at more in depth. After the editor, we then have our focus kind of transport bar. So we have a stop, a play, a pause, and a record. We then have a reference within a within a within the track or within the project in in terms of using kind of like musical style referencing, so like beats, bars, and divisions. We then have a tempo, a time signature, and the key that we're working in. The key is completely editable when you click on it. So if you're working in D sharp minor, you can just click D sharp minor, and the project is set to that key. We can customize this thing as well, which is amazing. I, I, the, the customizability of the transport bar is so cool from, from what Logic offers and, and how you can edit it. So what we're looking for is we're looking for this drop down menu here, which says display mode. Once you've clicked on it, you're gonna head over to customize control bar and display. Once that's been selected, you'll be able to adjust basically everything we see in the top of the user interface first is we're going to look at views so this first section here from a library to editors occurs on the left hand side the second section from list editors to browsers occurs on the right hand side just up here in this top right corner so focusing on the first left hand side by default it will be like this personally i think there's a little bit too much there going on so i'm going to remove the quick help and the mixer so I've now kind of simplified what I'm seeing on the screen for me 
to make it a little bit easier, a little bit quicker for me to navigate. So on the left hand side, my first three buttons um, up until toolbar is the library, the inspector and the toolbar. Again, the toolbar is just a little bit of a drop down, which has some quick features that you can access quickly on the fly. We have the smart controls and the editors. Again, every time I click this box, it disappear it, it you know it, it's gone like it's it's unticked so it's not there i click on the editors tick box and it's appeared and now i have access to that button uh, as you untick one of these boxes or tick one of the boxes subsequently the button will appear or disappear depending on what you have ticked or unticked in the second list here for list editors we have from list editors to, br to browsers it is one to one from left to right so list editors notepad apple loops and browsers we then have the transport in the next section which is these four buttons here personally i have it selected for stop play pause and record you may also have cycle there as an option back when i first used logic at the kind of like the start of logic pro 10 so it's I believe it's logic pro 10.0.1 cycle was one of the options enabled i believe that comes disabled by default so if you want to enable that please remember to go in here next is the lcd which is this part here it's like a screen first you have to head over to custom in the top drop down section before you're able to change anything for myself i have kept the position within the project but it's slightly different it labels it both within time so minutes and seconds and hours or however long a project may be and it also still has the beat timing or the musical timing so beat bars and divisions and and ticks on the next on the next section of the lcd i have tempo just so i can see it nice and big in my face it's there we then have a time signature and division which basically means what your note division is and how many notes are achievable per bar i then have a division which is like a set a set snapping scale or a set default scale of time within musical timing for the project i then have midi activity in and out this is great if you have anything uh, kind of plugged into it whether it's a keyboard whether you have some hardware that's sending out a signal from your laptop to some physical hardware i then have a performance meter just so i know if i'm having any issues with my cpu or central processing unit uh, achieving any of the work that's currently attempting to be done via the machine it also has a hard drive meter to tell me if they're struggling with loading times or trying to gather information just simply cannot keep up next on the modes and functions which are just here it will come on by default with several options personally i would recommend the replace which is great if you've played something in live and you need to just re-record over that part or just replace that component i then have a low latency mode which basically means if i have a singer on or a, or a performer of sorts i then have a low latency mode what this allows me to do is if i have a singer or some sort of songwriter or, or, or some some sort of performer or something something that requires the, the element to be recorded in live this low latency mode will reduce any delay from what the from what the performer is playing to the machine then processing it and sending that signal back out we want that to be as small as possible to not create kind of any trickery within the mind saying hey i'm playing too late or something like that we put on low latency mode and that negates any delay with i then have a tuner just to make sure that any basses or, or whether the singer is performing something they're in key and hitting the note within the right format and they're not going a little bit too sharp or a little bit too high or too low and then have a solo which is like a dedicated button i just hit the solo button at the top whilst i have some channels selected and it will just solo those and then have a count in which uh notifies the performer or the singer uh like a, a count from one to four saying hey get ready you're about to start being recorded i then have a click which is also known as a metronome and this is just usually played in the background for a performer or even for myself to know that something is being played or performed in time with the project so that is how I have it customized for myself. Again, there's a lot of customizability, so you can change it and get comfortable wherever you like. I see some people using the mixer and the quick help. Personally, if you don't know a tool, just try to learn it. That's why I have the quick help off. And with regards to the mixer, there is a dedicated button on your keyboard 
that every time you press it, it pops up, which is something I'll be looking at in the long term. So that was a brief overview of the top transport bar. So in the next video, we'll be looking at the library and the inspector. So you'll be able to get a grasp of being able to select sounds and presets and being able to navigate the inspector window to be able to adjust sound, look what's loaded, how you can adjust anything and, and all that good stuff in there as well. For today, that'll be it. And hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Take care. See you later.